I'm now going to take a quick look at limiting transformations in KineFX. There will be times when you need to limit the influence of control has on a rig. This is something which is actually reasonably simple to do within KineFX. Generally speaking, there are two approaches which you can use to limiting the access to a control. You can lock the control, and therefore not allow it to be changed at all. Or you can set a specific range for the control, and the control will not move beyond this range. I've set up a basic scene to show how this works. At the object level, I have a geometry node. Within this, I've created an HDA, and this HDA will contain my rig. I'll enter this node to look at the rig itself. This is an extremely simple rig. First, I have a line node. I then have a rig doctor node, which I'm using to initialize the name and the transforms. This is then controlled with a pose node. I've currently only activated the first point within the rig pose node and the transforms for this point are what we will be working with. I can then look at the type properties for my HDA. Under the basic parameters, I've set all the inputs and outputs to zero. Under the node tab, I've set the default viewer state. This has been set with KineFX underscore underscore rig pose. This is the default viewer state for the rig pose node and this is used to control the transformations within the rig pose node. So that is our scene setup, and we can now look at controlling our parameters. The first option we'll look at is preventing the parameter from being manipulated. This will be done by right-clicking on the target parameter, and we'll lock this parameter. The parameter I'm locking in this case is the scale. Here, I've simultaneously locked all of the parameters for the scale, but we can also lock individual channels. For example, I can lock the translate in Z. We should now no longer be able to move this rig along the Z axis. If I refresh the axis, we'll see that we no longer have the handle for the Z axis. And this will also apply at the HDA level. When I select the HDA and activate it in the viewport, the GNOME one will no longer display the locked parameter. For example, in this case, we can no longer even get the GNOME one for the scale. So that's how locked parameters work. Lock parameters, however, are not actually this simple. There are some things which we need to know when working with locked parameters. I'm going to add the vector for the translation to the parameter interface for my HDA. I will also add the rotation to the HDA parameter interface. There are numerous reasons to add these parameters to the HDA interface. For example, we'll no longer need to enter the rig to see the actual numerical value for the parameters. Although one of the best reasons for doing this is it simplifies our working with channels and channel groups. If we do this, we no longer need to go into the rig to deal with either the pose node or the channels. I can now select my HDA. I'll activate it in the viewport. And I can now move this point. However, we no longer have the expected behavior. Our lock is no longer working. And I can move the rig along the Z axis. Basically, when we use a reference parameter, it will override the lock on the parameter. I could, of course, set the parameter and add the lock after we've placed the reference. This, however, doesn't really have any effect. The order of operations does not have any real influence over this behavior. So if we want this parameter to be locked, we'll either need to lock the parameter in the HDA interface, or we'll need to specify the locks and the channel references separately. I'll clear out all the current channels. And I'll lock the Z channel. I'll then add the X and the Y parameters individually. If I do it this way, I'll get the access to my desired channels, and we'll have the updated gnomon. Next, we'll look at limiting the translation and the rotation of these joints. You don't always want your character to be able to move or rotate in certain directions. And in a lot of cases, you do not want them to move or rotate beyond a certain amount. It is very easy to implement this. And this is one of the other advantages of using reference parameters in an HDA. So for example, I select my translate parameters, and I'm going to restrict the translation within a small range. 
In this case, I'll restrict the translation to be between negative 1 and 1. To do this, I simply have to make sure that my range slider is locked, as locking the slider will limit all the transforms which are connected to the pose node. For the rotation, I'll need to work in degrees, and in this case, I'll set this to use between negative 60 and 60 degrees, and I can restrict the rotation to be between these two parameters. I can then select my HDA and press Enter in the viewport to activate it. I'll now rotate my rig. I'll no longer be able to rotate it more than 60 degrees or less than negative 60 degrees. And this is how we can limit the parameters. The advantage which we have for our translation is where we've separated the parameters, we can set the limitation on each parameter individually. So if we want to set different limits on different axes, we'll need to separate the parameters. So if we need to limit a parameter, it is as straightforward as linking that parameter to an interface, and then using that interface to limit the range.